In this video, I'm going to talk about rest interview questions. So let's start. What is a web service? Web service is nothing but a system or medium that works over network to support interoperable client server communication or interaction. The definition of this web service can vary and you can also frame your own words after understanding how the web service actually works. Sometimes interviewer could ask you question like what is the difference between web service and an API? On a very high level note, an API doesn't work over network but a web service can work. You can consider all web service as an API, but all APIs are not web service. Moving to next question. Which web service you have used in your project? In my experience, I have used web service like SOAP as well as RESTful web service. Moving to next question. Is REST a web service? No. REST is not a web service, but REST is an architecture design. It is used to create or build services that could be lightweight, scalable and have easy maintenance. And those services are called RESTful web service. Remember the term REST is an architecture design. Moving to next question. What are the protocols RESTful Web Service supports? RESTful Web Service supports mostly HTTP protocol. Moving to next question. Why REST Web Service is stateless? It supports HTTP protocol and since HTTP is a stateless protocol, so RESTful web services are also stateless. The term stateless means when you send the request from the client to the server, the server is not going to store any state of the client. That's why it is called stateless. Moving to Next question. What are the HTTP methods that RESTful web service supports? In day-to-day -day operation in project, we have used these four operations basically for CRUD, GET, POST, PUT, DELETE. Now, on a fresher level or a early level of experience, you can say Questions related to the difference between get, post, put, delete and the HTTP status code written by them is usually asked. But on a mid-level experience of interviews, there are other HTTP methods that interviewer could ask you. For example, patch, head, options, trace, connect. In order to understand the difference between patch, head, options, trace, connect with respect to get, post, put, delete, you would have to understand how the request body, the request headers, the response body, response status works. So, for example, if I have to hit an API endpoint, I would look for resource edge, request headers, request body. And in the response, response body and status code. So the difference between these HTTP methods is more or less related to these five only. How the request is sent and how the response is received. Moving to next question. Can you use 
post instead of get to retrieve data. To answer, yes, we can use post to retrieve data as well. If the request payload for retrieval consists of multiple values, we can use post instead of sending them as params in git. Now the real implementation can vary. Moving to next question. I am sending a request in JSON format. How does server know request is in JSON format? So when you send a request, for example, I am sending a request from Postman to test my API endpoint. In Postman, I would say two things. First is content type, application as a JSON, and accept as application as JSON. This means my API endpoint is accepting a JSON and producing a JSON also. So this is how when a client sends a request, server is going to know what, what kind of request format is coming to the server. Moving to next question. Difference between SOAP and TEST. In case of SOAP, it is a standard protocol, while REST is an architectural style. SOAP supports XML only, but REST supports JSON, XML, YML, HTML, plain text and multi-file also. In case of SOAP, it works on different network protocol or you can say transfer protocol like HTTP, SMTP, FTP, UDP, ETC. But REST only works on HTTP. SOAP uses strict format of messaging because of XML and also have support of WS security. So you can say it has more security or high security in comparison with REST. REST is lightweight, easily scalable, better performance. Common examples of SOAP include Payment Gateway, Telecom. For example of Payment Gateway, you can say PayPal. If you integrate the PayPal API, you have to send the request in the XML format. Common examples of REST can include any project, whether it is card systems or power consumption, media domain or any other domain where performance is going to matter and they need a lightweight, scalable and easily maintainable resource. Then they would prefer for REST. Moving to next question. How do you design the REST API endpoints? For designing of REST API endpoints, we have a model called maturity model. Now, this maturity model defines how you should actually design your REST API endpoints. Moving to next question. Let's say you have scenario to choose either SOAP or REST for a project on a very high level. How do you decide to which to use SOAP or REST? If we are talking about on a very high level discussion of choosing SOAP or REST, then I would prefer to look for first content type. Whether my project is going to consume JSON, XML, file or any other request format. If it is going to use XML only, I can go for SOAP, but if it is going to have a lightweight and scalable resources like JSON, YML or, or a multi-part file system also, I prefer to use REST. Next would be network protocol. If I want a support of FTP, SMTP, UDP or any other protocol apart from HTTP also, I would go for SOAP because REST only supports 
HTTP protocol. And the last that I would look for is payload type. If I want lightweight and scalable, obviously the options would be to go with REST. But if I want a strict format like XML and some kind of elevated security level, I would go for SOAP. Moving to next question. While testing a endpoint, I got 415 error. What could be the possible reasons? 415 error is within the 400 range of HTTP status code and it basically means a client error. In specific terms, 415 means unsupported media type exception. The possible reason could be request media type sent is not matched with endpoint media type. For example, if the API endpoint is consuming JSON and in the request you are sending the media type as XML. It will give you 415 error. Apart from this, other possible reason is payload format or type is incorrect. This means the request body that you are sending is either of not exactly matched the type that you have mentioned in your model or bean or some important or mandatory parameters are missing. Moving to next question. What is at the rate response status where you have used? At the rate response status as the name suggests is used to set HTTP status code in response. Now this you can use anywhere in any class of Java to set the HTTP status code but this is used mostly on exceptions layer. So if you have worked in Spring MVC or Spring Boot you would have a centralized exception handling and there you can use at the rate response status while catching specific exceptions. So it is mostly used on exceptions to send a specific business exception or messages along with HTTP status code to the client. For example, if you see the method is byte program exception and it is accepting a custom exception called byte program ex. And above the method definition, I have at the response status where I am setting the HTTP status code as a bad request and the reason I am sending to the client is a specific message to the client. So instead of a specific message to the client, you can send a predefined or more valuable region. This was all about REST interview questions. If you have experienced any other questions apart from this, you can put that in the comment section and I will make a video on those also. For now, stay tuned and subscribe for more upcoming videos for Java Microservice Spring Boot and Cloud.